hitter, bottom of the eight. 2-0, New York in the eight. Akir Watanabe is on the mound. He's pure concentration, pure focus. This is no coincidence. You're on your way to the Big Apple. Ten years ago, Ubisoft released the third installment of their mega successful stealth game series named Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. With its amazing gameplay, complex story and lifelike graphics for its time, it didn't take long for Chaos Theory to receive praise not only from game critics and developers, but more importantly for millions of fans that the series had already attracted with the previous two releases, Splinter Cell and Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow. Ten years later, the game still enjoys praise, being labeled by a mass majority of fans as the best one in the entire Splinter Cell series. So let's go back and take a quick look at what made Chaos Theory what it was a decade ago and still remains today. The story of Chaos Theory takes place in the year of 2007 when political tensions were hitting a boiling point between China, North Korea, South Korea and Japan due to Japan forming an international self-defense force which China and North Korea saw as a violation of a World War II constitution. After the two countries took measures against Japan, the USA decides to send a highly advanced warship named the USS Clarence E. Walsh to the Yellow Sea hoping that China and North Korea would back off. In the midst of an informational warfare that was taking place in the region, Sam Fisher was deployed to a mission in Peru where he was assigned to investigate the disappearance of an American computer programmer who was working on decrypting the infamous mass kernels which have been used in cyber attacks on the United States in the storyline of the first Splinter Cell game. Tasked with making sure that the algorithms didn't fall into the wrong hands, Fisher locates the American programmer unfortunately a little too late. Following a trail picked up in Peru, Fisher and 3rd Echelon continue to search for the stolen mass kernels only to reveal a spider web of conspiracy leading back to the United States as well as their allies Japan. In the meanwhile, the American show of force ended up as a huge fail after the USS Walsh was sunk by a North Korean missile. After North Korea denied launching the missile, Fisher was sent in to find out if they were telling the truth or lying. He learns that North Korea was indeed telling the truth and that the missiles were fired by a third party who was using the lost mass kernels. Soon North Korea launches an invasion of their south neighbors, so Fisher then heads to the South Korean capital where he finds that the attack on the American warship was orchestrated from the United States, nevertheless by the company of his good friend Doug Shutland. It was later revealed that Shellen was working with the Japanese ISDF and had intentionally sunk the warship in order to draw the United States into a war in which his PMC named Displace International would have great financial profit. After killing his old friend, Fisher was assigned with tying one last loose end, Admiral Otomo of the ISDF who wanted to return Japan to imperial rule by blackmailing the Japanese government. Otomo threatened to use the algorithms to launch a North Korean missile against a Japanese city and because North Korea would be supported by China and Japan would be backed up by the United States, the incident would most certainly spark World War III. However, Fisher manages to stop him in his intentions and brings him to justice. When it comes to gameplay, Chaos Theory continued where the previous two Splinter Cell installments left off but brought a whole set of new characteristics that set standards not only for this franchise but arguably stealth games in global. Unlike Splinter Cell and Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow, Chaos Theory gave players much more freedom in gameplay, offering them to choose their own way of completing a mission. Before the start of every new level, players were offered to equip Fisher with weapons and gadgets that would suit their gameplay style. They could select an equipment pack for either stealth or assault infiltrations, or they could go for a combination of the two. 
While going through missions and assignments no longer were players burdened with the three alarms and the mission is over system as that was no longer part of the game. In previous Splinter Cell games, executing the fifth freedom was something that could not always be done and would result in mission failure if it was not authorized by third echelon. In Chaos Theory, going lethal or non-lethal was a choice that was entirely up to the player. However, the game did encourage stealth and non-lethal styles of gameplay by rewarding it in a mission rating system that was activated after the end of each level. Along with changes in the gameplay philosophy, Chaos Theory was packed with some other cool new features that made the game even more awesome to play. Sam was equipped with a knife that he could use to execute quick and silent deadly attacks in any moment of the game. Alongside the old visibility meter, players got a new sound meter which indicated the level of sound Fisher was making in different surroundings. Also, a new hacking system was introduced which made certain parts of the game even more challenging. Another thing that made Chaos Theory very special were its new multiplayer features. Besides the classical multiplayer mode that was mostly introduced in Pandora Tomorrow, Chaos Theory featured a set of co-op missions that were intended for two players working together to complete different tasks. Though originally stated for release in fall of 2004, it was delayed until the following spring when it came out for the Xbox, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Microsoft Windows platforms. Due to the fact that this game depicted a war between North Korea and South Korea, it was banned in South Korea until 2006. In the rest of the world, the game accomplished instant commercial success, selling 2.5 million units across all platforms within a month of its release, during which it received critical acclaim. Official Xbox Magazine named it the Xbox Game of the Year of 2005 for its strong gameplay and lifelike graphics. The Spiracell series was continued in the years to come after Ubisoft released the follow-up Double Agent, followed by Conviction and the latest Blacklist. The only installment that didn't do so well in the evolution of the game was Spiracell Essentials, which was only made for the PSP platform. Ten years after it was released, Chaos Theory, on the other hand, is still often cited as the best game of the Splinter Cell series.